Whether it's for their Pokemon cards, video game consoles, or popular game characters, you've probably heard of the company Nintendo. Nintendo has had a huge cultural impact on many countries, communities, and families since it was first originated many years ago. Nintendo is a huge entertainment company and has been able to say that for over a century. Nintendo's success as a company can be linked with their ability to make creative new products and change the direction of their company when needed. Nintendo is a company that constantly changes product types, CEOs, and the company name. Nintendo was first founded in 1889 by Fusajiro Yamauchi as a company called Nintendo Kopai. The company originally started off making handmade Hanafuda cards, and Yamauchi hired assistants to help him make the cards faster once they got more popular. Yamauchi adopted his son-in-law, Sekiro Yamauchi, who took over the company in the late 1920s. Sekiro combined Nintendo Kopai with another company and renamed the company to Yamauchi Nintendo and Company. Sekiro made a distribution company in 1947 called Marafuku Company Limited. Sekiro adopted his son-in-law Shikanobo Anaba, who was renamed to Shikanobo Yamauchi, but couldn't take over the company due to him abandoning his family. Instead, Shikanobo's son Hiroshi took over the company in 1949 after Sekiro died of a stroke. The distribution company was renamed to Nintendo Playing Card Company Limited in 1951. In 1959, Nintendo got permission from Disney to use their characters on their cards, and in just one year they sold 600,000 card packs. After the massive hit, Nintendo went public and the distribution company was renamed to Nintendo. The huge hit led Nintendo to experimenting with more business ideas, like a taxi company and making vacuum cleaners. After the huge success, public interest for cards in Japan started dropping. Nintendo needed something new to keep the company alive, and it seemed like they found a solution. Hiroshi-san employee named Gunpei Yokoi playing with some kind of extending arm that he made. Hiroshi decided to take a risk and sold the arm as a toy released at around Christmas time in 1966. The toy was a huge success and sold over a million units. Yokoi was taken away from the assembly line at work to become a product developer. Yokoi continued to prove himself, releasing other toys like the 10 billion barrel puzzle, a baseball throwing machine called the Ultra Machine, and other big products. Around this time was when the arcade game scene exploded and Nintendo decided to try video games for themselves. Nintendo was undoubtedly one of the most successful companies producing arcade games in the 80s. Nintendo made its first arcade games throughout the 70s and early 80s, releasing games like Radar Scope, but didn't see any real success until the release of Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong was a game made by Shigeru Miyamoto, a Japanese game designer who still has a big part in the creation of Nintendo games today. When Donkey Kong was released for arcade in 1981, it was an instant money maker. In its first year, Donkey Kong made $180 million, and in the year following, it made about $100 million for Nintendo. This success proved that Nintendo was a big name in the arcade industry. Some other popular arcade games made by Nintendo were Mario Bros and Punch-Out, which told people that Nintendo was not joking around when it came to the arcade business. During the arcade craze, Nintendo was also trying out some at-home and on-the-go options to video games. During the arcade era, Nintendo made its first attempt at making at-home and on-the-go game devices. One of their first attempts at this was the Color TV game released in Japan in 1977. The Color TV game was Nintendo's first at-home console. The console was only able to play one game, and cartridges could not be put in to play more games. It ended up having 5 variants and sold 3 million units, which meant that Nintendo was ready for more at-home options. Nintendo then released a handheld console called the Game & Watch. The Game & Watch could only play one game, but Nintendo released 59 different versions for many different experiences. The Game & Watch sold about 43 million units, launching Nintendo into the handheld market. Then, the video game market crashed and it seemed like there was no return. The 1980s was a decade of ups and downs for video games. In 1983, the video game market crashed due to a handful of reasons. One problem was too many home consoles were being produced and families were being overwhelmed. Another issue was too many games were being produced and the game's quality dropped in result. The video game market dropped 97% in result and experts predicted that the video game industry would not recover. In 1985, Nintendo released the Nintendo Entertainment System or NES. Nintendo had released the NES in Japan two years earlier under the name Family Computer or Famicom. Nintendo released the NES with Super Mario Bros, a side-scrolling 2D platformer with the Donkey Kong protagonist Mario and his brother Luigi trying to save Princess Peach from the antagonist Bowser. 
Nintendo successfully saved the video game industry, with the NES selling almost 62 million units. A few years after the NES, Nintendo released their first proper video game handheld. The Game Boy, released in 1989, was a console of huge success and it proved that the handheld market was a big deal. When the Game Boy was released, games like Tetris were huge selling points for the Game Boy. The Game Boy was so successful because Nintendo fans thought it was amazing that they would be able to bring some of their favorite NES games and many original games with them in their pockets. All of the different Game Boy models were the original Game Boy, the Game Boy Pocket, the Game Boy Color, the Game Boy Advance, the Game Boy Advance SP, and the Game Boy Micro. The lifetime sales of the Game Boy ended up being 118 million units, and the Game Boy Advance sold about 81 million units. The sales of the Game Boy was an indicator of the huge handheld potential in the company. Nintendo was ready for its next big handheld. The Nintendo DS was released in 2004 and was both a huge innovator and a huge success that had a long line of successors following it. The name DS stands for dual screen and that was the biggest marketing point of the DS. Another big marketing point of the DS was the ability to use the bottom screen as a touch screen which was usable in almost every game on the DS. The DS could also play Game Boy Advance games, which was another big reason to buy it. These were all innovations that led to a strong start in the Nintendo DS's life. Two years later, the DS Lite came out and it was lighter, slimmer, and had bigger and brighter screens. The DS also had some very popular games like Super Mario 64 DS, Mario Kart DS, and New Super Mario Bros. The DS sold approximately 154 million units, making it the second highest selling video game console of all time. The sales of the DS was the biggest indicator of its success. After the DS came the DSi in 2009. The DSi had the Game Boy Advance slot removed to make the DSi thinner and added a front facing camera and a back facing camera with an editing software. The DSi also added an online store to purchase digital games and download them to your DSi. Being a pretty big hit, the DSi shipped 41 million units in its lifetime. The next successor to the DS was the 3DS, released in 2011. The biggest innovation to the 3DS, of course, was the ability to see the screen in 3D without the need of 3D glasses. Some of the biggest 3DS games are Super Mario 3D Land, Super Smash Bros for the 3DS, and Mario Kart 7. All the different 3DS models are the original 3DS, the Nintendo 3DS XL, the Nintendo 2DS, the new Nintendo 3DS, the new Nintendo 3DS XL, and the new Nintendo 2DS XL. Yeah, it's a lot. The 3DS has sold over 75 million consoles and continues to sell more today. The Nintendo 3DS family was a great money maker for Nintendo, and innovated on so many levels. Now, let's go back a couple of decades to focus on more Nintendo home consoles over time. After the success of the NES, Nintendo was ready for more home console releases. Nintendo released the more powerful Super Nintendo Entertainment System, or the SNES, in 1990. The console's most popular games were Super Mario World and Donkey Kong Country. The SNES sold over 49 million units by the end of its lifetime. In 1996, Nintendo released the Nintendo 64, which was the first Nintendo console that could support full 3D games. Super Mario 64 was a revolutionary game that was largely responsible for the initial popularity of the console, and the Nintendo 64 sold about 33 million consoles. After the Nintendo 64, Nintendo released the GameCube, a console that improved the 3D graphics even more, and included a new controller that is still considered to be one of the best video game controllers of all time. The GameCube was not a very successful console, but it is now one of the most beloved Nintendo consoles for its great games. The most popular games on the GameCube are Super Smash Bros. Melee and Super Mario Sunshine. The home console that was released after the GameCube was the Nintendo Wii. The Wii was mostly popular because of its appeal to the casual audience. The motion controls and games like Wii Sports and Mario Kart Wii really pushed the idea of the Wii being a console for casual gamers. The Wii was insanely popular and sold over 100 million units. The console after the Wii was the Wii U, released in 2012, and is widely considered as a failure. The Wii U was more powerful than the Wii and it had a new controller called the Wii U Gamepad, which is a big controller with the screen on it. The biggest reason for the Wii U's failure was its poor marketing and not giving a good representation of what the Wii U was. The Wii U sold about 14 million units before it was discontinued. The latest Nintendo console is actually a hybrid between a handheld console and a home console, called the Nintendo Switch. 
The Nintendo Switch comes with a tablet, attachable controllers, a dock where you put the tablet in it and it projects its image onto the TV, and other accessories. The games on the Nintendo Switch have also helped out a ton with sales with games like Super Mario Odyssey, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, and many more. The Nintendo Switch has already proven to be a tremendous hit as it has already sold over 34 million units since its release in March 2017. Nintendo has definitely gotten a lot of money off their home consoles over the years. Over the past decade, Nintendo has had many accomplishments and many failures. No matter how bad the failure was, it always seemed like they were able to bounce back. Since it was first founded, Nintendo has gone through a lot of company changes. Nintendo has always had a big impact on many people and should continue to be that way for many years to come. Thank you so much for watching my documentary.